Hi guys, my name is Courtney. If you guys are new here, I have been making YouTube videos on and off for years, but today I thought that I would just stop by and tell you a paranormal story that happened to me. If you, by chance, had watched my last 19 and Pregnant video, I had quoted in there, said something in relation to a horrible apartment I was living in when we had moved three hours away. And that's where this story takes place. This is not a continuous story. It's going to be very caught up into the things that actually happened while I was living there. I'm hoping this doesn't bring me any bad juju or any bad feelings or anything into my life because I just I can't deal with that right now. Now, when I moved three hours away from my entire family, I was 19 years old. I had just turned 19. It was March. So it was in the country, it was on a farm, it was about 20 minutes outside of town, so it is a pretty long drive, there's not many people around, it's very secluded, dark, scary, lots of deer, you know how it is if you live in the country. And when I first saw the apartment, I didn't feel a certain way about it, it was just, okay, well this is an apartment, a place. All right, guys, I'm sorry if this is off center where it was before. So anyways, when we first met the landlords, I didn't really think much of them. They were some older people. They lived downstairs. It was basically a duplex. We lived upstairs. They lived downstairs. We moved in, I would say, the beginning of May, I believe. So we move in, and everything is going pretty well. I work at the same group home that my then-boyfriend worked at. He would work a shift, it would be from 2.30 until 10. I would come in and relieve him and work from 10 to 6.30. So for any of you that have never worked at a job like this, you're the only person there. So you can't leave, you don't have the option to leave, so that can't interrupt my story, that can't come in and be like, well that's not true. Because it was so small, you only needed one person to work there. So I was home alone a lot during the day. I would be there as it got dark. I would leave when it was dark and he would come home after I got there. So he'd come home to a dark home. Our landlords went to bed extremely early. They, we didn't see them much unless they wanted rent or to take, to have our garbage come out or anything like that. Well, one day I would say it's maybe 4 p.m. And I have to tell you the layout of our apartment so you can actually get a full understanding of this place so it was very long but it was not very wide to get into our apartment you would walk up these stairs okay and when you came in you had your hallway our bedroom was the first door on the left straight ahead from that was our spare bedroom and then if you turn you're gonna walk down the hallway which is where like the laundry would be you'd walk into our kitchen and right when you walked into the kitchen there was a door right here that went down to our neighbor's house, but it was also locked. So you could go down there, they couldn't come upstairs, it wasn't anything like that. Once you're in our kitchen, you could go straight, you'd walk into our dining room, which is connected to our bathroom. So you have to go into the dining room to get into the bathroom. And then you also come back into the kitchen, you can go into the living room, and then in the living room is the door for the attic. I was making spaghetti because I really wanted spaghetti, and I happened to turn on the turkey on the stove and I turned it on and our stove sat right in the corner of the room so I couldn't see into the living room as it was behind me and the dining room you had to walk back a little bit and go through the door so I couldn't see in there either but I had turned the turkey on I was going to watch tv so I went to walk into our living room and I caught something out of the corner of my eye in our dining room and I was like what the hell nobody's there we don't have any pets we don't have he's not home we don't have any friends no fam nothing so I turn over and look I'm just looking in this room and I see a lady a lady standing in there I was kind of like I don't know if I'm, my mind's playing tricks on me but when I looked at her she had a long black dress on and she also had a veil on now I know I get this so often anytime I tell this story people are like oh you were probably just imagining the woman in black you're probably just blah 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 okay that's the only thing I can really compare this person to, would be what the lady in black looks similar to, but it was not how she looked. It was just a very freaky moment for me. You know, I'm here alone, like I've never lived on my own without him being here, you know, I'm making it up, it's fine. So I kind of just like, was like, mm, I don't know. So I walk into our living room and I decide to walk back, obviously, because my turkey is cooking on the stove. 
So I walk back into our kitchen and I glance into the dining room and she is still there. She's still standing there and I don't know. It's it's kind of like to me that she was like admiring me or watching me, like watching what I was doing, but didn't want to make her presence known. And it is a very, very, very old home. I mean, if someone had passed away there or if something had occurred, you know, I wouldn't put it past for something like that to have happened there in that place. I'm thinking I'm imagining things. I'm like, it's fine. It's whatever. So I go back, make my spaghetti. Everything is good. I don't really um, pay much mind to it. Uh, I guess it was more or less me thinking that if I was making things up, like telling somebody else about it to just like freak them out isn't going to help me out. So I didn't say anything to my boyfriend. So I stay home that night. Obviously I go to work and then a few weeks later I'm making spaghetti again. And this time I'm at the stove cooking and I hear singing. Why would I hear singing? Who's, who the hell is singing? And it's a, it's close. Like the voice is really close. Um, as, as farmers, our landlords were very, they had a very set schedule as to what time they'd be home, what time they left, depending on if things happen or not. So you, you would know at certain times they'd be gone or they'd be milking or they'd be uptown getting whatever they had to get. So this is one of those times where I knew that they were gone. I hadn't seen them all day. They weren't in our driveway. Their cars would have been there had they been home, but they were both gone. And I hear singing, so I'm like, what Thinking maybe it's the TV, I go to walk into our living room again, catch it out of the corner of my eye, and I look over and this lady is standing there again. At this point, at this point, first hearing singing, I don't know where it's coming from, and seeing this lady, at, for whatever reason, I just could not take it. I was like, no. So I went back to the stove, I turned my food off, I took my car keys and I left. I left that apartment. I was like, oh no. I'm not We've gone into act the town together. And when we came back, I'm a very private person. If I were to show you around where I live right now, all my blinds are closed. Uh, if we had curtains, the curtains are closed. Everything is closed because I just don't like people that can't mind their business and are constantly looking in. With our landlords living downstairs, I didn't want them seeing in. I didn't want them knowing I was home. I didn't want them talking to me, you know, just normal things that you would think. Well, me and him came home and we walked into our living room and our blinds were turned up. What? And when I say our blinds, I don't mean just one blind was turned up. So what I mean by this is when somebody were to go and look out the window, if they like push it down, they're like looking out to see if somebody's there. That's how this was. And it was one slit in every window. And mind you, we had one, two, three, four windows in our living room. Um, all the blinds were turned down like somebody had been looking out to see if somebody was home. It was not me. It was not him. Because, again, we're not expecting anybody. Why would we be looking out? Why would we be whatever? And it wasn't like this when we left. So I'm like, what the? What the fuck? So I walk into our dining room. Our dining room window is also pushed down. Our kitchen window is also pushed down with the blinds. Our bedroom, our spare bedroom, all of the blinds are pushed down like somebody's looking outside. <clears throat> and that obviously really freaked me out because I was just kind of like, Ugh. I don't know what this is. I don't know why this would be happening, but I'm really just not interested in it. Please leave, like, <laughs> please just leave. Um. So <clears throat> here is more of, my random things that just started occurring at that house. So at the end of May, my boyfriend decided to buy me a cat for our three year anniversary. And so he bought us a cat, his name is Felix. And it was very ironic because when I had been driving with him a few days before, we had saw a bird and I was like, oh, it's Felix, it's our bird. And then we found this cat and his name was Felix and he was just like, you know what, it's meant to be like, that is our cat. So we got Felix and I was at work one day and it was about 2.30 in the morning, mind you, I did night shift. So I was awake all night long and it's about 2.30 in the morning and my boyfriend calls me, sends me a little text. I don't answer my phone call, but he texts me and he tells me, he says, Courtney, Felix just jumped off our bed ran down our hallway into the kitchen 
So he got up at this point to go and look and see what Felix was doing because Felix, when he goes to sleep, he goes to sleep. That's just how it is. So he walks over to the door. He happens to look down the hallway and Felix is going like this. Like the cat, when you're scratching their neck, oh, they'll purge, like move their head around so you can like scratch them. He's doing that right in front of our fridge, which is right in front of our dining room. And my boyfriend hears somebody say, oh, Felix, how I've missed you. What? No, that's, that's not okay. So my boyfriend's freaked out. He's like, what the actual fuck just happened? Like, why the hell did I just hear somebody say, oh, Felix, how I've missed you. When it's 2.30 in the morning, our landlords are asleep. I'm the only one here. You're not here. He gets up randomly out of bed, jumps off, and somebody's scratching his neck, and somebody says his name. Like, how, how does that make any sense? So that was really freaky and I had come home one morning and my boyfriend had complained he said that he's like oh my chest really hurts or something along the lines of my stomach hurts and I was like oh I wonder why and we pull up his shirt and he has scratch marks just going down just going down his chest and I'm just like what the fuck you know like it just didn't make any sense as to as to what was going on and I know a lot of good people could say oh well he was cheating oh well, he was blah blah which I could understand but mind you we worked at the same place he had never lived there before he had family members but he didn't really know anybody either so I don't think that was the case <clears throat> so there's one day he was gone at work and I am just you know chilling doing my thing I'm really exhausted though from working the night before so I decided to take a nap it's about three in the afternoon right after he leaves for work and I always leave my bedroom door closed just because I feel like if there's something negative in the house that it would come through the door and I'm gonna be there and I'm just no it ain't for me so I leave the bedroom door closed and our closet doors are closed so in our bedroom it was shaped as an L and the long part of the L, there were sliding doors for, as a closet. And when you first walked in, there was a door that opened that was also a closet. So we had three closets. We had two closets with three doors. Um, but I fall asleep. And when I wake up, it's dark out. And I, like, look over. And my closet doors are closed. And my bedroom door is open. no like you know it's just it's just that feeling it's just kind of like, oh this is really eerie this is really nasty like, oh I just don't want to be here one day um sorry I'm just getting a little jumbled in my thoughts right now so one day I am at home he's at home and we just kind of hear a noise so he was like what the fuck so we like walk into our living room and our attic door is open and it wasn't something you pushed up. It was an actual door that opened. And our attic door had been opened. And it was really damn hard to get that door open. We had tried getting it open. And we had to pull and pull and pull. And it would not open. And this just randomly opened. No. And that bitch. Nah. So I really didn't appreciate the place that we were living at. And one night, <clears throat> me and him are sitting there. This is like a very rare occasion where we were actually both off the night. So I am sitting there with him. We had um, patio furniture. Um, so we had like this little tiny wick couch. And then we had a recliner. And he was sitting on the couch. And I was sitting in the recliner. And he could see into the kitchen. He starts telling me, he's a like, Courtney, I can see somebody in our kitchen. And I was like, what do you mean somebody's in our kitchen? Like, And he's like, but Courtney, like, for real. And our cat walks into the kitchen. He glances up. He's like, Courtney, she's right there. I just saw her. What do you mean you just saw her? He's like, Courtney, I just saw her. She's wearing the dress. She's got the veil on. Like, Courtney, she's in our kitchen. <sighs> Obviously, he was a little bit more detailed with what he told me. But I was just kind of like, oh, no. Like... I told you that was me and if he's seeing it too guys it can't be something that I'm imagining you know it can't just be something that I'm like oh, oh, oh it's great whatever well all these things that started it's just like been happening it had just been making me very uncomfortable and I didn't 
I just didn't want to be there anymore. Everything about that place was making me uncomfortable. I was scared. I felt, I felt eerie just being there. And so eventually me and him had decided that we were moving. We had made up some excuse for our landlords. Like, look, we're moving. We're breaking our lease. This is early. We're breaking it. Would it have been six months early? We left in December. We moved in in May. So I believe about six months. So we tell them and they're kind of upset. They're like, oh, whatever. Well, anyways, we're, we're leaving. So I'm packing our stuff. Like literally from the time we decided to move until we actually moved was like 10 days. And I was packing everything up. And it finally came the day for us to leave. And he comes in to get everything. And our cat runs in our spare bedroom behind one of the closet doors. So there was an extra closet drawer, so we had it sitting in the spare room up against the wall. So there was like a little crevice that a cat could crawl in behind. And me and him have everything moved out. And we go to grab our cat. And he's like, Courtney, can you help me? I was like, yeah, of course. So I walk in the spare bedroom with him. I'm on this side. He's on this side. And the door is right behind him. And he goes to like pull it forward. And I just felt something. I just felt something. I don't know what I was feeling but I felt it. It was right behind me. I could just, uh, it just made me so uncomfortable. So I'm like, what the fuck? So I just have this feeling and just, you know, not thinking anything about it. I just turn around. And this lady is standing in the doorway. And I can just, I can vividly remember her. I could just remember her dress. I can remember her I can just remember her dress, I can remember that veil, and I can just like remember her looking at me like she had these dark black eyes, and it was just so scary. For a good five minutes, my boyfriend was like, Courtney, 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 screaming my name because I was not listening. I was so in zone with just staring at her that he kept screaming my name because like I I couldn't pay attention. I couldn't take my eyes off of her. It was just so mesmerizing. And oh my god, at that point, I was like, I'm never coming back in this apartment. I am never, ever coming back here. I'll leave all the rest of my stuff. I don't give a shit. We finally get Felix out. I get out of the zone. I get Felix out. We turn around. Obviously, she's not there anymore. I walk with my cat down the stairs. I trip and fall on my way down the stairs. And that was the last time I was ever in that apartment. Because I don't... I'm not doing it. I'm not dealing with it. It was just scary. It was creepy. It was... Ooh. I'm going to insert, I think if I can find it, I, which I found on Google a few weeks ago, a picture of the property um, like up above so you can see the house, the barn, just the farmland and everything around it. Um, one other experience that I did not add in here that occurred during this time, boyfriend had gotten really mad at me and we were in a big argument, which wasn't uncommon living there. We had been really good before. I don't know if it was just because we moved in together, but so he goes to his car downstairs and I don't want to lose him. I love him, so I follow him down the stairs after he's already in his car for a while. I go downstairs and I get in his car. It's snowing outside. And I happen to, while I'm looking at him while he's in the driver's seat, and I just happen to like see out of the corner of my eye something on our neighbor's porch. So I'm like, so I turn around and I look and I see this old man, like a really old man, guys. Like I'm thinking maybe in his 80s walking off the porch. So I'm just like, oh, that's interesting. I've never seen him before. So I'm watching him walk off the porch and he takes one, two steps and poof, he's gone. From, I think when it started, I had, I think it was like two weeks in, honestly, I had called my mom and from living there for two weeks, I was telling her all this ghostly stuff that had been occurring that had made me uncomfortable. Just, oh, it's making me feel so icky and gross and nasty. And she kept telling me, she's like, you need to leave. You need to move out. You got to go. You need to leave now. Like, not in 10 years. Courtney, you need to leave now. I don't want you staying there very long. Please leave. And I just had a, you know, I just got a new place to live. I couldn't just up and leave. I said I didn't think I could at the time. But we did end up moving out of that place. I have never been back there. I have drove by it if we've been up there in the area. But it just gives me such bad vibes that I don't want to go there. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about that lady. I just want that erased from my memory because it freaks me out. Oh, it's so scary. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, comments, uh, 
or anything I guess on this video then yeah please let me know but don't deal with the dead don't deal with paranormal shit don't deal with ghosts don't deal with demons that's all I can say they all they is is trash